we've seen that clay surfaces and mineral surfaces in general have this negative charge which arises from isomorphic substitutions of lower charge part of, uh, atoms in place of silicon. So we have this negatively charged surface. What's going to happen there? And how is the water phase specifically going to interact with that surface? And as well, how will the, the charged particles interact? Well, let's start off right at that surface. So right at that surface, we have a net charge. And so what we need to find is something that will balance out that charge. So we're going to find that cations will bind in an almost rigid layer with that mineral. In fact, we characterize clays by the associated cations. So they're so intrinsic to that clay that it'll actually come into the actual definition of which clay is which. So that first layer. Now you can see in this diagram that the black dots are the cations. Some of the cations are absolutely um, in contact with the mineral surface, but many of them are depicted to having water surrounding them. Those are hydrated cations. And that means that that water is also very tightly bound. Some of that water will not evaporate off that surface till over, well, between 500 and 600 degrees centigrade. So it's really almost chemically part of the system. So we have to be very careful when we think about water in soils. We don't often think about the fact that some of that water is, is essentially chemically bound uh, in a nearly permanent way. As we get further and further from the mineral surface, the cations are held to that surface by greater and greater numbers of water molecules, so meaning that their attachment is not nearly as firm. And they could be exchanged. So this is, these exchangeable cations are very important to the chemistry of soils as well. They can buffer out the concentration of, 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 of cations in the soils, creating environments that have consistent uh, qualities for life. Now, going further yet, we finally have some hydrated cations which are still attracted to the surface because they are negative, they're positively charged, there's a negative charge uh, to the left and they can go uh, bind to that, but they're held loosely, okay? So there's a light electrostatic uh, attraction. At this point, we also see the arrival of some, of some anions. And these anions also surrounded by water because water is polar, so it can go either to its positive or negative end, uh, um, binding to the to the cation or anion. What are these uh, anions doing here? We have a negatively charged surface. A negative charge doesn't want to be there at all, right? Well, we still have the forces of osmosis because we have created a really high concentration of cations. Osmotically, there's a deficit of, of anions, and so they will diffuse very aggressively into that layer. So we have the stern layer of the bound particles, and then we have what we might call the gooey layer, G-U-O-Y, for, for uh, the person who, who described it first, which is an area where there's an co enhanced concentration of cations, but an associated diffusive uh, content of, of anions. <coughs> So cation rich, anions still present. The whole layer can be described as the potential energy that you field. So essentially there's an electrostatic energy field and then there's a repulsive field. When you build more and more cations up, it makes a, 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 a counterbalancing repulsive field. So in net, we have an equilibrium situation where there's, a, there's the same energy throughout the system, but there, um, but the energy of attraction might be electrostatic versus osmotic further out from the, from the wall. So this uh, diffuse system of, 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 of cations and anions we often call the boundary layer or the diffuse, uh, diffuse layer and taken together we call it the, the double layer theory of, uh, of interfacial processes and it's very fundamental to how water is absorbed to surfaces and how cations and any associated other charged um, molecules are affiliated with mineral surfaces.